So for this program of Wagner, Liszt and Mahler, I've, I've got to choose between a, a, several sorts of different flute to play. It was a particularly interesting time, the end of the 19th century. In Germany and in France and in England, people were trying new systems of flutes. And uh, when one plays music from a large time span, 1850 something to 1890, six, I think. The, the instruments had developed quite a lot, but at different rates in different countries. And so, uh, for instance, the new Bohm system, the silver Bohm system, cylindrical flute, really took off in France, but it took quite a lot longer to establish itself in Germany. And so you might have an interesting situation where a flute section in one orchestra might have two or three different sorts of flutes being played alongside each other with all the attendant problems and possible jealousies and resentments. So this, this conical flute, which is actually English, um, has uh, a low B um, and it's, it's, it's basically an eight-keyed flute system with the, with the extra B which works pretty well for most of the repertoire I need it for. It's, I, I love it. I love the mellow woody sound of, of the conical flute. There's a particular bit in the Mahler which uses low B and you see that it's got pewter plugs for the, for the keys. So we've got metal on metal and I have to do, be able to do so it's a great B, but there's a rather a lot of typewriting noise in the way. So I think I'm, I'm going to try oiling that and see if we can get rid of that noise. Otherwise the conductor might object to the tapping. They often had ivory head joints. Jane Mitchell, who's playing second flute, is, is playing a Maya flute from the period. And that's got an ivory head joint um, and key work. Um, it's very heavy indeed. And well, we've got a joke in between us. We call them our elephant guns because <laughs> some of them are made of elephant, obviously. And they feel heavy enough to, to sort of shoot and kill an elephant. <laughs> Wagner is so careful that with the way he writes for the flute. He uses it for a lot of pianists. We, we think of Wagner as being fat and heavy music. It's not. It's delicate in the extreme. There are a lot of people there, but it's, it, he produces incredibly shimmering sounds. And he uses the flutes very thoughtfully. And it, it's clear he wasn't after volume from a flute. He was after colour. We have this um, Morse code, I think Roger Norrington called it, this weird rhythm that goes against what the strings are doing. And it sort of floats up and up and up, and it just hangs there like a cloud, um, delicately and sweetly, I hope. So things to listen out for, the, the Mahler is, beautifully written for the flutes, particularly beautiful in the last of the Mahler songs, the way he writes for a flute trio. Um, at the beginning of the movement it's very low, using the low B, um, and then the very end of the piece it just ends with an F minor chord and the harp accompanying three flutes, triple piano, um, and he writes non-sentimental and I think that, that little moment, if, if nothing else, is, is the reason I wanted to play my old keyed flute. People have mixed feelings about Mahler. Um, when I, I was mad about Mahler as a teenager, I couldn't get enough of it and listened endlessly to symphonies and tried to play along 
with the records and follow the scores. Uh, I was nuts about it. And I, I think the reason is that it's so very emotional, which one is as a teenager, emotional and, and unashamed of it. And then as I got older, I, I sort of got a little embarrassed about how much I'd loved Marla when I was younger. And now I'm a bit older still, I, I, I feel quite sentimental again about how much I loved it in the first place. Anyway, it's certainly very thrilling to play.